more east and um, we're just going past uh, Hookhead. Uh, we've got some incredibly moody skies uh, and we're wondering if we're going to have a squall later. So, uh, But we're also sort of like looking at our alternate routes. Um, uh, so our first um, alternate route is just to go to Kilmore Quay. Um, which is where we had planned to go yesterday, wasn't it, Bev? It was. But um, the sea was just far too lumpy and I hate it when I'm slamming Salty Lass. Whereas at least today, it's um, there's, there is still swell, um, but, you know, it's just what you get round here because you have got the Atlantic and you have got um, that swell coming from the Atlantic and uh, it's just part of this coastline really. Pretty much so, but what we're debating is if this wind is going to turn ever so slightly east then we could find it getting us going up the Irish coast. And we have no shelter until Arklow, which is a good way off. Um, but also for transiting St George's Channel and getting over to the Welsh side, it doesn't make a lot of odds to us whether we start from Kilmore or Arklow. Mm. Yeah, there's um, not a great deal of difference in the distance. I think it's about 20 nautical miles. Yeah, basically uh, the big difference is um, with Arklo you've got a choice of um, going to Hollyhead or going to the Anchorage and going over Carnarvon Bar, whereas with Arklo, uh, it's really uh, sorry, Carnarvon. sorry uh, with um, Kilmore Quay, it's Carnarvon, Carnarvon or Carnarvon. <laughs> But um, that's the di difference between going up to Arklow. Although I rant about forecasts and uh, people know I've got a bit of a thing about them. And the fact that Beverly uh, is always convinced that they're completely wrong. I'm always convinced they're wrong in the detail, but in, I, I, I'm prepared to believe the generality. And uh, The general forecast for next week, or the end of this week, is much more settled weather than the next few days. Mm. And I'm willing to believe that that's probably right, that the weather from the weekend onwards will be considerably more settled than what we're seeing for the next couple of days. Now, <laughs> we, uh, our schedule is incredibly long as well, so one of the things that Beverly and I hate is running to a schedule, uh, but this particular schedule is actually three weeks from today. Yeah, the, uh, the English don't bury people very quickly. <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> so, um, you know, so our schedule's uh, quite long. So we've got quite a bit of time to get it done. Yeah. Uh, and as long as we're there a little bit beforehand, that will be fine for us. Exactly. Um, so that's really all we're doing. Yeah. just seen the sea change colour rather dramatically as we've gone from 14 metres of depth to 25 metres of depth and to be honest with that sort of depth I didn't expect to see a, a, a change in the colour on the surface but I can still see it even from here and that bad weather is closing in on us. Uh, yeah I've just been listening to the uh, weather forecast and um, we've got 4-6 imminent. Right Kilmore it is. <laughs> Kilmore it is. We'll be there in an hour and 40 minutes. Yeah. Or rather, we'll be at the leading line. Yeah, in an hour and 40, but you know, with imminent, nah. <sighs> well, uh, <laughs> let's chuck it down, the glamour of sailing. And um, the wind is all over the place. And uh, the minute it's trying to come forward of us, so we're, we're corkscrewing around all over the place to try and keep a constant angle on the wind. But, uh, oh, boys are boys, what a day. <laughs> but um, I have to say, I find um, downwind sailing actually worse because um, you're keeping an eye on the wind decks like mad and crazy. Yeah. Um, and um, it's just really hard to steer a course. It can I be. I mean, say, a few yeah. seconds ago, I was going directly north. Um, now I am going the direction I want to go, <laughs> but it doesn't take much. But the other thing is, I just get so confused by the wind. Um, like a minute ago we were doing 4.4, but it just didn't feel like it. 
We're now down to 3.4 knots. St. Patrick's Bridge, which, uh, which is the waypoint to get in. Um, as you can see, the instruments are <laughs> getting absolutely soaked. But it's one of the reasons people say to me, why do you spend money on marine instruments when you can just stick an iPad on your binnacle and hope for the best? And, um, well, to each their own, if you're in the sort of place where that's going to work and you're doing fair weather sailing. But, and I know you can buy cases for them and all the rest, but I'm just not interested. I just want to be able to let it do whatever it does and I don't have to care. Buckets of salt water, chucking rain. I just let these get on with it and they work fine. So I would rather have that comfort and that assurance than um, doing what one YouTuber did where he had, his, <laughs> he had his iPad with Navionics in a plastic bag at the binnacle with a blanket over his head to keep it all dry and his wife tell them, no, nope, turn a bit left, no, nope, turn a bit right. That was crazy. following swells have got much steeper, haven't they? They have, and that's the other thing, is the fact that uh, the following swells, you know, it's moving the boat like this, you're going downwind, it is very, very difficult um, to keep your boo right. Well, any, anybody who's got a sailboat goes in and you downwind sea, you tend to have a rolly boat. Exactly, and um, as you can tell, we're rolling a little bit. In some ways you feel defeated because you're not sailing, but equally, you know, salty last means at least 10 knots of wind. It's just that simple. So, that's that.
Hey, you scruff, what's happening? Well, <laughs> we got in, and I think we just got in just in time because I can tell you now, I don't want to be out, I would not want to be out sailing in that. I think the heating's going on. Yeah, absolutely, girl. Uh, well, we thought it was going to be all restful here in Kilmore Key, wasn't it? But we've just had a bit of excitement. Oh, yeah, if it's only um, a boat's rafted against us, but um, I can tell that they're a lot lighter than us, um, so they are the right way round. It's just I remember once um, somebody rafting light on the inside and heavy on the outside. <laughs> I think they're actually a bit longer than us, but being a racing boat... They are definitely, definitely lighter. Lighter than us. <laughs> <laughs> so always have the lighter boats on the outside. So, uh, but yeah, it's just nice. Um, makes a bit more interesting and you'll have some people walking across our deck any second now. <laughs> I think we already do. I think they're probably resetting their lines, actually, but you know. Even so, but it's just one of those things. Oh, somebody's coming. is the wrecking shore or shall I call it the graveyard of a thousand ships just shows you just how bad this place can be when the winds are blowing and um, yeah you could easily just wreck your boat on this But um, I'm, I'm looking forward to moving on, but no, I'm staying in, I'm happy enough with that. 